Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'm going to review Vimin Limpid Green by the Claypool Lennon Delirium. It's not really an album, it's an EP of four cover songs. And I figured I did the first, their debut studio album, so I figured I'd do this too. Checked it out, listened to it, so I figured I'd talk about it. Now these are all cover songs, all old cover songs. So, yeah, this was originally released on Record Store Day of this year, 2017. I believe it was April 22nd. You could only get it on vinyl. And August 4th, I believe, they released a retail version. That's the one I got. So I'll talk about this band first. It's Les Claypool, who you might know from Primus and various other side projects. And Sean Lennon, who is the son of John Lennon and also member of the band Ghost of a Sabertooth Tiger. And they got together, made a band. They released their debut album last year. It was great. And they released this EP of covers for Record Store Day. So let's get into it. Now the first cover, the first track is Astronomy Domain. Now this is a Pink Floyd song. This, they got the actually got the name for the EP from this song. They say the first line in the song is Lime and Limpid Green. This was written by founding member and the original singer guitarist Sid Barrett. Uh, I've read up on Sean Lennon at least, his feelings about Sid Barrett, and he seems to be a very big Sid Barrett fan, as am I. Pink Floyd, the only Pink Floyd I really care about is the Sid Barrett Pink Floyd. I like some songs afterwards, but they're just so much more interesting to me. And Astronomy to Mind is actually my favorite Pink Floyd song. So I was thrilled that they covered the song. I actually saw them live last year and they covered this song live, along with another track off of this. So that was pretty sweet. It's a good cover. It was, like I said, it was written by Sid Barrett. It's on their debut album from 1967, The Piper at the Gates of Dawn. If you have not heard that album, it's freaking amazing. So check it out. It's not going to be Pink Floyd you're used to, but give it a chance. It's really great. And they do a great freaking cover on this. Sean Lennon does most of the lead vocals on this, and he just sounds great. Okay, number two. Track number two, Boris the Spider. This is a song by The Who, who I'm sure you've heard of, written by John Entwistle, not Pete Townsend. They didn't go with the Pete Townsend when they went with one of the John Entwistle ones from the album A Quick One in the UK. And in the, on, in the US, it was on the album Happy Jack, both released in 1966. Actually, I think Happy Jack might have been released in early 67 in the US, but the original recording of the song was released in 1966. It is about a spider. Noteworthy that some people say it has the first death metal vocals in it. So he goes really deep when he says Boris the Spider. Claypool sings this one, which is fitting. Jenna Whistle was the bass player of The Who, one of the best bass players ever. And, you know, obviously Les Claypool is a bass player. And a great one at that. So just another... Really good cover. I spoiler alert, I love every song on this, all four songs. Number three, The Court of the Crimson King. This is a cover of the King Crimson song. And this is on the album In the Court of the Crimson King. Released in 1971. It was written by Ian McDonald and Peter Sinfield. Uh I actually saw, when I saw them last year, they did this song, too. And it's just freaking great how they do this song. I've always really liked the song. Never got too much into King Crimson. I like some of their stuff. I just haven't heard that much of it. They're a um, progressive rock band that a lot of people seem to love. A lot of people that like bands like Pink Floyd seem to like King Crimson. So we have to check out more on them. But this song I have heard quite a bit. I like it a lot. So... And they did this live when I saw them. And this is from 1969. I don't know if I mentioned that. They did this live. They alternate voice the uh, verses. Four verses, I believe. And 
Sean Lennon sings one, then Les Claypool sings one, and so on and so on. Another great cover. Just loving the covers on this album. Now this last song, Satori, I believe it's pronounced. I'd never heard the song before. And believe me when I tell you, that's rare. I pride myself on my knowledge of rock and roll, rock and roll history. I, I know so much stuff from the early days of rock and psychedelia and all that. I'd never heard this before. The band called the Flower Traveling Band, which was a Japanese rock band. Interestingly enough, it's also written by the Flower Traveling Band. It's from the album Satori, released in 1971. Did some research. There's actually five songs on that album. Satori 1, Satori 2, Satori 3, Satori 4, and Satori 5. This is actually a cover of Satori 1. And this is really badass. The original and the cover. I'm not sure which... I think I like the cover a little more, just Claypool and Lennon, but man, the original, is, I, I think it's the original, yeah, it's the original, they wrote, they did a bunch of covers, it's the Flower Traveling Band, but they wrote this one, and this is really good, uh, man, it's just, I don't know how this song slipped through the cracks, um, I'm sure a lot of you out there have probably heard it before, maybe a lot of you haven't, if you haven't, check it out, and this cover just, kicks ass. It is so good. I When I first heard it, I had to listen to it over and over again. And they even made a video for it. You can check it out on YouTube. And I believe it's Les Claypool directing it, going by the style of the video. He makes some really strange videos for stuff, and I love it. And I love this track. It's great. And I'm really glad they did this. I was... A lot of Les Claypool's side projects end up being one and done kind of things, like the Holy Mackerel and the the Fry Brigade only had one studio album, and Oysterhead only had one studio album. That's what just seems to happen. Uh, Bernie's bucket of Claypool's bucket of Bernie brains, I think it's called. That was they only had one album too. And I'm really glad they did the the original studio album, the debut album, and they did this. I hope they do more. This might be my favorite side project of Claypool's. It, it, they just sound so great together. So, yeah, check that out. I believe it's available on iTunes. It's called Lime and Limpid Green. Claypool Lennon Delirium. I think you can go buy it. There's a retail version. It's so good. If you're into, you know, weird music and songs from, you know, the 60s and 70s, Songs that aren't quite as popular as the ones you normally hear. Check this out. It's wonderful. I give it a 10 out of 10. I got to give it that. So, I know it's only four songs, but four magnificent covers. So, all right. Have a great day, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the review. Go check this out. Like, subscribe, favorite, share. Uh, yeah. I do have a Facebook and a Twitter, so check those out. I put the links below. I have a Tumblr now, which I just started yesterday. I don't really know how to use Tumblr yet, so it's in the early stages. So, yeah, check it out. Have a great day, everybody. Hope you check out this album. It's great. See you later.